Ce n'est pas une image juste, c'est juste une image. Political events all over the world starting from 1968 till 1972 caught attention of many intellectuals and film directors. Jean-Luc Godard claimed that the social explosion of May 68 in France had a decisive impact on him. Nos camarades étudiants nous ont donné l'exemple en se faisant casser la figure il y a une semaine. Il n'y a pas un seul film qui montre des problèmes ouvriers ou étudiants tels qu'ils se passent aujourd'hui. That night, the Latin Quarter of Paris became a battleground. He started to film students whose rebellions in 68 in Paris. Sous les pavés la plage, sous les pavés la plage, sous les pavés la plage, sous les pavés la plage. Sous les pavés la plage, pavés la plage. And reflected his political views in his films made in Gigavertov Group. Such as. Snatchracht. Filmtracht numéro 1968. Un film comme les autres. One plus one. Le guest savoir. British sounds. Prouder. Le Van Dest. Lutz en Italie. Admir et Rosa. Tout va bien. La tête Jane. It is important to underline that most of these films were made collectively in order to represent a socialist ideology, mainly in collaboration with Jean-Pierre Gorin and the film crew. Godard's goal mainly was to make the films that are understandable by the students and workers, that is the proletariat, who were willing to react to the political and economic system, which in turn reached a level of full-scale revolt it strikes in factories and in the universities. There are 10 million strikers in France. At this point, his elaborate study of Marxist politics is of notice that could make his point clear both to bourgeois class and to the proletariat as an attempt to show them the real problems of the constant class struggle. In other words, Godard made his films socially relevant of his time, which included the discussion of revolution, events of May 68, Vietnam War, struggles of the people, Italian rebellion, etc. Godard was not only making films about socialism, political and economic system or the proletariat, which would catalogue all the participants of the events, but also to combine the theory with practice. Le mot theory. Puis le mot pratique. Le mot théorie, puis le mot pratique. Firstly, a seeming summary of the body of ideas in Godard's films can be demonstrated in accordance with the Communist Manifesto. Naturally, Godard used various quotes from the Communist Manifesto and structured his political position as a representation of it by means of a moving image. La mission du nouveau pouvoir politique de la classe ouvrière et de ses alliés est la création d'une économie et d'une société nouvelle, c'est-à-dire socialiste. Godard creates his own manifesto by saying The problem is not to make political films, but to make films politically. Godard's political views are represented in a speech of his characters. For example, in Guess Avoir, in discussion of politics, they express what Godard himself maintains. Bien sûr, 
pour trouver la solution, soit d'un problème chimique, soit d'un problème politique, il faut dissoudre, dissoudre l'hydrogène, dissoudre le Parlement. Là, on va dissoudre les images et les sons. McPean discusses the methods and the techniques such as montage, film setting and casting of amateur actors, which Godard used in his films in order to acknowledge his political views. In his article, McPean arises the question whether the Jacob of group films were made for workers and if the labor class had been able to understand or at least watch these films if they were walking all day long in the factory. However, the films were made for militants, students and activists who were gaining knowledge about the real situation outside and, most importantly, learning how to combine theory with practice. Godard's films are very theatrical. In Vladimir et Rosa, the theatrical construction of the film is seen how Godard portrayed the police. The police are represented as a powerful tool to keep the political regime. Policemen were filmed only in the moments of the battle between them and the citizens, which demonstrated their cruelty towards young students, as well as their incapability to communicate with them. Police officers attack young students. They do not try to listen or understand what people want to say to them. They are just accomplishing the order of the state to stop any rebellion by any means. In Tuvabian, the students and workers meet police after the rebellion. Police officers again attack young students. The working class has nothing to lose in front of the bourgeois commanding class. Therefore, they should apply the theory to practice and start to fight for their commonwealth. Let's see again a sequence from Tuvabian. The theatricality of many scenes are used as a tool to visually empower the political ideas. In La Vendeste, one of the first scenes that we see on screen is the process of putting up makeup for the actors. Godard makes fun of the Hollywood capitalist films, in which there are always makeup artists. He compares this Hollywood style makeup to that of a clown, which another actor of the film, who is playing a socialist, is making by himself. Havana, observing Tuvabian, emphasizes the undistinguished role of the political and aesthetic representation in the film. Godard's Tuvabian was one of his last films in his radically political period and it represented his main ideas featured in his previous films. The article was an exploration of Godard's use of camera and how his style has changed through the years working on his films. The article described Godard more as a master of the camera rather than a political activist. Kavanagh writes, It is an attention to a very precise historical dimension which characterizes the whole system of embedded narrations making up to Wabian. Godard has provocatively referred to this film as a long tracking shot, not in space, but in time. As we have seen, this film attempts to carry out an analysis of the potentially revolutionary forces developing with in the post-1968 French political situation. Sympathy for the Devil, or One Plus One, as Godard said, was his last bourgeois film. In this film, Godard compared fascist doctrine with extremely revolutionaries. Godard demonstrates how cruel and unjust a revolutionary can be regards to women. In the junkyard scene, we see how black revolutionary men kill women because of their skin color. The revolutionary must realize that the black revolution has begun without waiting for the day in which the white worker will reconceive his ideas about the black man. What is the link between communism and black power? Same old question. The existence of black power is asking a similar question to the one who opposed Stalin to Mao. 
Subsequently, we also see how Godard portrays women under fascist ideology, which is similarly represented in Godard's next film about the capitalist ideology. Godard represents his political views in the images, which young people draw on the walls, while in Le Van d'Est, Godard makes his character read about communism. In The Sympathy for the Devil, he is caught in Hitler's Mein Kampf. We see a character reading a book in front of two Maoists and afterwards we see how wildly Maoists are treated by people and even children who follow fascist ideology. There too. For the state must draw a sharp line of distinction between those who as members of the nation are the foundation and the support of its existence and greatness and those who are domiciled in the state simply as owners of their livelihood there. The research of Godard's political view, however, cannot be understood without a socialist reading, outlining the theory of revolution and suggesting some practical guidelines, which, as a consequence, motivated all the activists and rioters to rebel on the streets in May 68, and therefore convinced Godard to make films politically rather than political films. Get <laughs> off!